Kepler's second law. So I'm not going to derive this second law in terms of physics. I'm going to describe it and then I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to, I'm going to model the motion of a planet around a star and show that it agrees with Kepler's second law. So what is Kepler's second law? So imagine that I have a star of mass m and a planet of mass m. That's lowercase m. And it orbits in an elliptical orbit. That's, that's what Kepler's first law says. And I do have a video demonstrating that. Uh, I'll link that down below. So Kepler's uh, law, second law, says that if you mark out the sector that a planet moves in some amount of time, any amount of time, so some amount of time, it goes from here to there, and then we could find the area of that sector, okay? And then I do it at some other point. So over here, it's going to, it's closer to the planet, but it's going to have to move a further distance in the same amount of time to have the same area. So equal areas and equal time. So this sweeps out some area A1. Later, it sweeps out some area A2 in the same amount of time, but these two areas are equal. That's what, that's what Kepler's second law says. I mean, it's kind of amazing because, you know, Kepler didn't have uh, Newton's laws of motion. He didn't have gravitational force. He didn't have momentum. This was just an observational uh, data thing, and it's kind, of, it's kind of cool that he looked at the motions of planets in the sky and was able to say, oh, then they have equal area of time. So it, it's pretty cool. So but what I want to do is to make, number one, make a Python model, which I actually did, a Python model showing the uh, orbit of a planet around a star, and then calculate the change in area per time and show that it's constant, and then do this sector thing. I want to draw that. So how, how do we do that? Um, I'm going to use a numerical calculation uh, in Python. I'm going to show you the code. I've already have this first part. And, and here's how it works. The basic idea is if I have a, a planet, a star and a planet, and I calculate the vector from the planet, from the star to the planet vector r, and the, the planet has a vector momentum p, I can calculate the gravitational force f. So the gravitational force is going to be negative g, that's just a constant, the product of their masses, this r hat is just to make sure that this is a vector along with that negative sign, divided by the distance between them squared, you got to take the magnitude. Once I have that and I break this motion into small time steps and where dt delta t is small uh, depending on your situation, I can assume this force is constant. If this force is constant, then I can use the momentum principle to update momentum. So this means I can find the momentum at the end of the time interval, that small time interval with this equation right here. I have more details on this in my previous Kepler's Law video, so you can go look at that. And then I can assume that the momentum is constant during that time interval and update the position r2 so i can calculate r2 at the end of the time interval and then update time and then just do this whole thing over and over and over again until i get a complete orbit or whatever i want uh, and that's a numerical calculation so it's it seems like it shouldn't work that make these approximations and you get things to to work but it does indeed work as long as delta t is small Okay, I'm going to show you, I've already put this into Python code. I'm going to put that in there. It will come back over the paper and talk about uh, areas. Okay, so like I said, this code, I'm going to give you a link to this code. So you have this code. So this is a, a web vPython, GlowScript, also known as, uh, in a web page. And it's Python, but it has some uh, visual modules in there that I really like. So let's just go over this code right here. All this stuff is just my constants. I put them all at one. Uh, they could be in some units this just works. I didn't have to put in large masses for the sun and the earth and all this stuff. So I just put ones, except for the velocity, just because I want it to be uh, an elliptical orbit. Then I make the sun is a sphere. That's a three-dimensional object. I'll show it to you in just a second. And so if, also for the, for the planet. I give the planet an initial momentum. So just to make it work out easy, I put the planet on the x-axis with the velocity in the y-axis um, initially so that it'll make a nice orbit. Then this loop, so I have a time interval of 0 0.001 units. I didn't say what t was. Uh, and then I do this for five times, whatever that's called. Uh, rate 1000 just says don't do more than 1000 calculations per second. So with a time step of 0 0.001 things, this will take five seconds to run. Okay, here is the first part. Calculate r, the vector, from the star to the planet. I am assuming that the star does not move, okay, um, just to make things easier. I mean, 
if your mass of your planet is very small, that's a pretty good approximation. Now I calculate the gravitational force. Here you'll see norm r, that's r hat. Mag r is the magnitude of r. And then this is update the momentum, update the position, update time, that's it. Let's run this thing. I'm gonna give you the link to that. There's, here's my star, there's my planet orbiting around. Five seconds. And th this is a 3D thing, so you can actually rotate this around if you want. Um, it is 3D. If it's flattened out in the uh, XY plane, um, but you can make some cool pictures with this. Okay, so that's that. I have my model. Now I just need to calculate areas that the thing sweeps through, which, you know, it, it's not completely trivial, but it's not. we can make some approximations. So let's jump back to the paper and talk about the area that it, something sweeps out. Okay, paper time. So let's draw an object moving in an elliptical orbit. Actually, I'm gonna trace this right here. Okay, so there's that. Now let's say that it, it moves, I'm gonna have a big time step. So it goes from this position with, with the R to this position, and I know the velocity vector, which is momentum divided by time, is that V R. So this is kind of like uh, a parallelogram. So let's draw this R V. I'm going to just draw that as a line, and then I'm going to draw this like that. So you see, there I have a parallelogram. Um, and if I have this vector r and that vector v, I can actually calculate the area with a trick. I can say the area of this triangle, well, the area of the whole thing is going to be the magnitude of r cross v. So here I can say the area of the triangle is half of that, right? It's just half of the parallelogram, half the magnitude of r cross v. And that's the, cross, the vector cross product. Now I have to take the magnitude, otherwise, oh, no, it's not a vector. You could have areas of vector, but I'm not going to. Okay, so if I'm at some position right here, I can calculate, I know R, I can calculate V. V is just gonna be the momentum over the mass. Uh, oh wait, this is V dt. This is V dt, V dt. Right, because I need an, if I just use R cross V, I don't get an area. But I am just moving for some time step. And this is not the exact area because this assumes that V and R are constant. But again, if delta T is small, then it should work. So uh, I'm gonna get R cross P over M and then multiply that by DT. And that should be my, I'll call that DA. It's the area. So if I have a super tiny, what I'm gonna do is calculate these super tiny areas every time, super tiny areas. And then they will all be DA, DA. And I, what I can do is for each time step, calculate DA and then make a graph of DA as a function of time. And it should be constant. Um, R across, yeah. So let's do that. So that's all I need to do. I'm gonna make a graph, I'm gonna calculate DA, I'm gonna make a graph of DA versus time. And then we'll do the sector thing after that. But that this will actually prove it, right? Okay, so going back to the computer, first thing I'm gonna do is make a graph. So down here, I'm gonna say uh, G1 equals graph. Uh, X, let's call this title equals area sweep no d it delta area how about that <laughs> thinking of a good name x title no x title is going to be equal to time and i'm not going to put units because i don't have the right units here and then uh y title is going to be equal to da and again i don't have units i i do have units but i don't know what they are uh and then I'm gonna say width, just to make it look nice, 500 height equals 250, and that's that's the labels for the act for the graph. And then the actual graph I'll call F1 is a type of object G curve, color equals color dot blue. 
Okay. So now down here, all I need to do is to calculate dA, and I, I'm going to do exactly what I said. dA is going to be equal to 0.5 times the cross product, no, times the magnitude of the cross product of R, which I have, and P, uh, V, which X, V. So it's going to be planet dot P divided by lowercase m. I called lowercase m my thing. And then I need to multiply that by dT. So that's exactly the same equation I have right there. Now I'm going to plot that. So I'm going to say f1.plot t dA, and let's see if this does indeed work. Okay, so there's going around, and you'll notice here it looks like it's not working, but in fact it is working, right? This is this is a super, super, super tiny area, and it's not going to be exactly constant because I'm making some approximations. But still, how much is this changing? Look at this, 35, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1.5, 1.1. So it's changing a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. The, the graph just zoomed in on it's almost zero um, because of my small, small time steps. But that seems uh, fairly constant. It's going down here from... Uh, See, if I look on my axis, that's 35.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, and this is 35 times 0 to the 10 to the negative fourth. So still, it, it's constant. That's constant. It's just that it's zoomed in. Okay. Now, but we can I can use this to calculate areas of a wider sector. Okay. Um, do I need to write it down? No, I think I can just do this. Okay. So let's pick a time interval. Um, so I'm going to go back over here. And let's just call this capital T. Uh, capital T is 0 0.5. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where the, where the mass is. I'm going to move just uh, 0.5 seconds. I'm going to bound that, that area out. So let's make this uh, R1. No, yeah, it's called R1. Equals cylinder. Position equals uh, sun.pos. Axis equals uh, planet dot pos minus sun dot pos so i'm making a cylinder i'm drawing a cylinder from the sun to the planet so i can like mark those that sector that's what i'm going to do uh, and then the act the radius is going to be equal to let's say uh, 0 0.01 now i'm going to run this until t is capital t and then i'm going to draw another cylinder so I'm going to copy this. At the end, outside of the loop, I'm going to draw another one. I'm going to call it R2, and that's going to be it. So let's see if it just sweeps that out and stops. Let's just stop there. Okay, so there's my. So there you go, and it stopped. Um, okay, now what I want to do is to. Ooh, this jumped up. I wonder why it jumped up. Maybe just it didn't really jump up. Okay, now what I want to do is to calculate the area during that time. So up here, I'm going to say a1 equals zero the area during that sector. Down here, I'm going to calculate dA during each step, and I'm going to add that to the total, right? So I'm going to start off with the area of zero, and every time I move, I'm going to calculate the little sliver of, t of area and add it to the big thing. It's basically a numerical integration. So I'm going to say A1 equals A1 plus dA. And then at the end, I can print that. So let's say print A1 equals A1. Okay, so did that, and did it print my area of 0.175. Looks cool. Okay, so now I have that. Let's pick some other variables here. Let's say, um, let's say T2. That's that's the, the, the second time I want to do the, the loop. So I need to just do a normal loop uh, without plotting or anything. So I'm, I can still plot. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to paste it. Now I'm going to say while t is less than t2. I never said what t2 was. t2 equals 1. Let's see. So, yeah, let's just try 1. Um, now it's just going to... That's fine. That's fine. I don't need to do this. Uh, but that's fine. Okay, let's just see what it looks like. So now I'm going to make my first sector and then move a little bit further. I want to go a little bit further. I want to go like over here. So let's say 1.5. T2 is 1.5. Let's just try that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to draw another sector right there, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing I did over here, but call it A2. Okay, 
So down here, let's copy this. And let's make this one a yellow. I, I was gonna fill these in, but then I'm like, I just don't really need to do that. Uh, I'm gonna say this one's color equals color dot yellow. And then I'm gonna do this whole loop again. Oh, I need to do this too. Uh, A2 equals zero, then do the loop. Now I'm gonna do it less, while well, it's less than T2 plus T, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna do all that. I guess let's do the same thing. Let's do it all in one fell swoop. Uh, A2 equals A2 plus DA. Uh, update that, and then down here I'm gonna put this again, make the other that, I'll call it R4, um, and then I need to print A2 equals A2. Let's see if this runs. I haven't saved it in a while, I should save. You should always save your work. Okay, there's my first one. Okay, and then it stopped, and then so I got, oh, Identical. Now, I do want to finish. Let's just let it run again so it does a complete loop so it'll look like a good textbook problem, uh, and then we can talk about it. So down here, I'm going to copy all this, and then I'm just going to say... And notice I'm never reset time, so I can just do... I can just, It's T picking up where it left off and just do that. I don't need to calculate A2 again, and that's that. Okay, so here's my first area. Here's my second area, and then it finishes the loop. And these two areas are the same. It calculated them, and that is proving. No, not proving. That is demonstrating Kepler's second law. Equal areas and equal times. And so then if you want to do something uh, like zoom in, or you could go over here, and you can play with this code as you like, I can change this time interval to, let's say, 0.3, just for fun, see what happens. So they're smaller areas, but they're still the same. So I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, but again, down below, link to the code, down below Kepler's second law, a uh, first law. Uh, I am gonna do a demonstration of Kepler's third law, which is actually pretty easy with Python, uh, but that'll be in another video and all those videos I'll probably link down here. So that's that.